All right, guys, today we're back with another tutorial. Today it's going to be way shorter than the last one, I promise. Um, I just want to show you three quick ways on how you can make your subject stand out with Lightroom. And I'm going to show you three simple techniques and not necessarily how much to edit, but how to use the techniques. And then you can choose and decide how to go about the edits yourself. So let's jump into Lightroom. Now I'm choosing this image because it's quite a simple image. Uh, I shot the other day of this woman walking around in a rice field here in Bali, where I'm situated right now. And I've just slapped my own quick uh, preset on it, a very quick edit. And it looked like this before, and now we are onto this. So what I want to show you today is the first and very, very simple way of masking out a subject is the new tool that Lightroom and Adobe gave us last year by the end of 2021. And what you do is you just simply hit the select subject tool in the masking section. And what it does is it masks out the subject perfectly for us. And if you zoom in, you can see, except for the grass down here, which is to be expected, it has masked out the subject perfectly. Maybe without a little bit of the, um, of the hat here, we can see that a bit, oh yeah, it didn't mask out the hat, but for now, that's fine. What I usually do is if you want to make our subject stand out though, we don't just want our subject to be selected because we put our, on our base edit and that's probably good enough and we've done a lot of edits. So what I wanna do is I wanna go to the mask and I wanna hit duplicate mask. And what that does is essentially just give us another one of the same selection. But what I usually do then is I go to my subject and I hit invert. And what that does now is it selects everything but the subject which makes it way easier for us to make the subject stand out that way. And a simple way to do that could simply be now to lower the shadows, lower the highlights, uh, maybe even lower the blacks a little bit to create some more contrast and also put up the contrast slide a little bit. I usually like to go about it to decrease the clarity a little bit and uh, not that it's, it's too noticeable, but already now you can see that we've done quite a lot to make our subject stand out even more. And what I like to do then is I go to my subject afterwards. I just do slight adjustments there. I, used, I like to put up the clarity a little bit. I like to usually put up the shadows a little bit. Maybe in this case, we'll actually drop it down, put up the highlights a little bit, um, put up the whites to make them stand out, lower the contrast maybe. Yeah, lower the contrast a little bit. And this again, it was not to show you how to edit it, but just to show you how to quickly make your subject stand out. And without the edit, it looks like this. So. With a few clicks and adjustments on the sliders, we've just created a lot of depth and contrast in our subject or in our photo without having destroyed it and with easily having the subject stand out even more. Now, as mentioned before, we didn't exactly hit the hat entirely perfect. So the old way of masking and when the select subject tool fails to help you, there is another way, and that's the old way that we used to do before Lightroom gave us these new tools. So let's go to our mask one, which is the selection of our subject. And let's zoom in a little bit. So what we can do now is we can hit the O key and that reveals everything that has been selected. Now we can decide to click add and we can use the brush tool. Now this can be used to either uh, mask out the subject entirely or you can just do adjustments like I'm doing now. Sometimes depending on what your subject is, it doesn't have to be a person, it can be a dish, it can be um, a deodorant, it could be basically anything. Lightroom will try to determine what could be the subject and then you can help it out afterwards with the brushes. So what I would do here is I'll make the brush very small. I'll make sure that I have auto mask selected out here and I'll actually increase the flow to 100%. And then I'll just slowly mask down here and with auto mask selected, it'll, until we got to the very, very small part of this, it actually selected it perfectly because it tries to help us as much as possible. So what I can do now is hold down my option key and get the deselect tool. And the cool thing now is that I only deselect something that I have actually selected already. So I'm only working with this brush right now, which is only select this small part. You can see when I highlight this, it highlights exactly what we have here. So if I try to hold down option and I have the brush tool for negative, it doesn't affect anything but the things that I've actually brushed, which also means that if you wanted to deselect something, if it's selected too much, the way to do that is to subtract, then use the brush tool 
and you get a negative brush tool and then you can actually subtract something here and you can see if you hover over that that's what it's selected so that's how to remove something it's if it selects too much for you now i'll delete this brush again and what we can do now if is that we all also have our other mask but obviously that has that part of the hat masked out so what i can do is i can click on my brush tool and i can hit command c Control c on windows go to my other mask and say Control v or command v and now nothing really happened because what we have done is we've still just masked out the part of the mask that we didn't want in this part of the um, the mask so what we do now is that we convert it to a subtract which is essentially what i showed you before but instead of doing selecting subtract selecting the brush tool we just copy this one and convert it to a subtraction as and as now what you can see is now we don't have that part of the hat selected anymore so very subtle change but it makes that part of the hat stand out a little bit more as well which we didn't have before so if we just quickly go to our mask again, we can see that without that, it's actually quite noticeable how much it doesn't stand out now. So if we apply both of these masks, it helps a lot to highlight that part of the mask as well. Now, the one last thing that I want to show you is another mask that you can create, another way you can work with it is that I usually like to use a lot of radiant, uh, radial and gradient masks and what you can do here is you can choose the linear gradient sorry it would call radiant radial gradient and linear gradient um, and what i usually do is i select a radial gradient and then i'll drag it up from the bottom i'll drag it up high to convert to make this very slight adjustment and what i want to do is i want to just make the bottom darker so what i usually do is i'll drag down the shadows which didn't do that much then I'll probably drag down the blacks a little bit as well. Could even drag down the whites as well. Maybe drag that up actually, and then drag down the blacks even more. Now I like this effect, but what you can see happened is we also hit our subject a little bit. So what we can do here, we can actually use the subtract tool and then select subject. What that does is just removes the subject from our selection. So now even though we have made a mask, we don't have our subject selected. And that's how you can actually work around with these masks. You can also, let's say we wanted to apply some more contrast to our uh, subject here. You can actually go in and say, okay, we want to select our subject again. And then we want to intersect our mask with a linear gradient. So now we only select the left side of her and very partially because you can see our linear gradient here is selecting the left side, but because we are intersecting it with our subject we only get a brief a slight selection of our subject here which we can now we could potentially up the highlights a little bit because the light is coming from this side like this and then we could potentially let's zoom out again before we do that potentially create another selection of the subject and intersect that with another linear gradient coming from this side like that and then we could lower our shadows and lower our highlights from that side. And if we zoom in again, it's probably very, very subtle what we've done. But you can see we've created some more contrast on the right side and we have created a little bit more highlights from the left side. So that's how you can work with some lighting details as well. So going through all this mask, that was a very brief and quick tutorial. But what we have essentially done now is if we remove all of our masks, you can see this is what we started with. We highlight our, our subject a little bit. We lower the background in this case to make our subject stand out even more. So, so essentially what I'm doing is I do the opposite with both masks. So it could also be that you wanted your subject to be darker and you wanted your background to be lighter. You can do it the other way around. I said this is just an example. Then we wanted to apply some more depth uh, and contrast in our foreground but without having that affect our subject because all our subject adjustments we want to control them essentially just on our own and then we created a little bit more contrast and light in our subject afterwards so that's essentially a way to work with subjects that i do a lot in basically all my photos to make them stand out so what i usually do is make out my base edit first and then i go into making some more detailed things things with masks and 
masking out my subject and working that way. So guys, just a very brief, quick tutorial today. I just wanted to show you how I'm doing this because I think it's a very cool and essential feature. And I know a lot of people that probably don't know how easy it is. I didn't use to mask as much as I do now because it was just a hassle to mask with having to brush everything uh, out all the time. But with these new tools, you can just simply click and then you can do the intersections and you can mask and mix them all together if you want to. You do the same radial mask, you can do a lot of the cool things. So this is just to show you a cool, few cool techniques. If you are interested in me making some more videos on how you can use mask or go in depth on how I edit, please let me know in the comment section and please hit the like button and subscribe if you want so to, to see some more. It really makes a difference and yeah, I'll just see you in the next video.